What's going on? Hey, in today's video, we're going to talk about three simple ways, easy, super easy ways to improve your offense. So let's jump right into it. Oh, wrong one. Can you not see anything? It's the beautiful thing about live. So three easy ways to improve your offense. So simple, it hurts, okay? A lot of us are moving into the spring ball, and we want to get better than what we were last year, and this is three ways we can do that. So first thing, why should you want to improve? I mean, maybe you have a good thing going, and you, you don't really want to mess with anything. That's a great point. But you want to improve if you're, one, struggling to score points. Let's be honest, if you don't score, you don't win. It's as simple as that. Yes, you can give me the defensive thing that if they don't score points, they win. That's BS. You've got to score points in order to win. Maybe you're losing players to another sport. Basketball is very popular now. Baseball is very popular now. You got soccer that's going on right now. Football is competing with a lot of other sports, and you may be losing kids that way. If you want to improve, if you do improve, you will be able to retain those kids. The third way is to keep momentum from last season. Let's say you had a phenomenal year last year, and all of a sudden, you know, you want to keep it up. You don't want that momentum to fall because objects that uh, go in motion tend to stay in motion, and that's what we're trying to do right here. And to build excitement. Let's say you're a new coach that you're coming in, and you, you've got to create buzz somehow. The easiest way to do that is through offense. Let's, let's call a spade a spade. Most people aren't excited about defense getting excited and hyped in defense in the offseason, but those that are on offense do. So that's why you should want to improve. So the very first way is, I'm, I'm a family house kind of guy, a full house kind of guy, is Uncle Joey, your playbook. What does that mean? As the meme says, I love memes. You've got to cut it out. You need to apply the 80-20 rule to your playbook. And if you don't know what the 80-20 rule is, it is saying that 80% of your success on offense comes from 20% of your plays. You need to figure out what are those 20% of the plays. Then you need to sit down and actually talk to your players. This is a very good thing to do. You can actually sit there, let me move my head out of the way, and have interviews with your players. And that does two things. One, it shows that you're having a, a dialogue with one and uh, with them, and they are a, a part of the offense. And if they have ownership, then they're going to do more in the offense. And the second thing is you can actually see which plays they actually like. What are they comfortable in and they want to run? That is very important. The third thing you can do is actually talk to your coaches. You would be surprised at how many coaches really don't understand the scheme and what plays fit with what plays and their role inside of the offense. Well, to do that, you need to sit down and walk them through it. I'm not talking about sitting up there and just, you know, having a clinic talk. I'm talking about a man-to-man, one-on-one, just looking, answering their questions, telling them your whole philosophy, and getting them on board with the handful of plays. And then the last thing is the review film. Look at the film from last year. What did you call in certain situations? What did you seem to always end up calling, even though on the game plan you had something different? When it was crunch time, what did you do? Were you more, you know, tight butthole and run the ball? Or was it open and loose and you were actually throwing it? You have got to psychoanalyze your own self, and you can only do that through film. So that's the first thing uh, that you can do. The second one. Apply the Hamilton approach to practice. I'm a huge Hamilton fan. I've watched it over and over again since it came to Disney+. And you know Aaron Burry says, talk less, smile more. Well, flip that on its head. Practice less, rep more. Okay? What does that do? It keeps your players fresh. How many times do you grind out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, give your players a little bit of a break on Thursday, and then you play on Friday, and you wonder why they're cramping all the time? It's because you were not keeping them fresh. You don't have the the goal of playing in the game and not getting injured in mind, and you gotta you gotta think about that. The second one is it builds confidence for everybody. If you're not practicing as much, and you're getting a lot of reps, well, reps become you become a master when you get a, a certain number of reps, at least ten thousand. So if I'm getting these reps in and every day at practice, I am just being successful. I'm catching balls. I'm running. I'm blocking. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to, everything you teach me to. Well, the players are going to have an overwhelming sense of confidence, and that is going to carry over into the game. Then also, it protects your family time. If you're practicing less, you get to go home more. And we all want to go home. If you talk to any coach anywhere, 
Their number one regret when they resigned from coaching is they didn't spend enough time with the family. Well, this is a way you can have your cake and eat it too as well. All right? Another thing, reps are key. Like I said, you have to have 10,000 reps. You have to get those same blocking styles down, the same running styles, the same passing, the same catching, the same route running. You have to do that over and over and over again because if you don't, how are you going to get great at something? If you are throwing in new plays every single week on top of four-hour practices, you're going to see two things happen. One, the kids are going to struggle in practice because they suck and they're just not going to be there. The energy is going to be down, and you're going to do a lot more yelling, and you're going to go home with a headache. And two, the kids aren't going to show up. They're going to come up with excuses, with BS excuses. Hey, I got a doctor's appointment. Hey, I got to stay after school, even though, you know, we've been in school all year. You're going to have things like that come up over and over again when your practices are way too long. And then you got to play the game inside of practice before it's played. Meaning, if you're game planning, you've got to get those calls that you're going to call in certain areas of the field multiple times throughout practice, throughout the week. Why? It gives your players confidence. It lets them know, oh, when we're on the plus 25 on the left hash, this is the play we're going to call. Or if we're backed up on the minus three yard line, these are the handful of plays we're going to call and we're going to be successful. It also helps you and your coaching staff know what you're going to call. So you're not on the headset talking about, hey, what should we call? What should we do? What play is this? What are we going to run? You eliminate that noise and distraction throughout the uh, during the game because you've already practiced it over and over again in the uh, in practice. It's that simple. And then uh, a caveat, a side effect of that, is you are building confidence in your players and your staff. Your players know the game plan. They know what uh, runs and passes you're going to call on certain aspects of the field. And your coaches also know that as well, so they know what to look out for while you are actually calling the plays, and it builds that, that camaraderie on the staff. All right? The third thing is don't crisscross your offense. I was a big crisscross fan, jump, jump, baby, uh, back in the 90s. I'm showing my age. And what this means is you need to stop switching schemes. It seems like every coach I talk to in the offseason is looking to go either from the air raid to the run and shoot or the run and shoot to the wing T or the wing T to the air raid or the wing T to the spread air wing T air raid. You're trying they're trying the next best thing from season to season and you need to stop that because you get great when you do the same things over and over again. You do that by running the same offense year after year after year. And don't give me any of that BS saying, hey, i got to adapt my scheme to my players each year. That's BS. It is because if you're running the same thing in your your JV level, in your B team level, over and over again, you're going to find the guys that go into that system and they're going to get good at it. Why? Because they are doing the same thing over and over again. It's, It's the same with weightlifting. You don't go in there and change up your weight program. I hope not from year to year, do you? You don't go one year, we're just doing nothing but bench. The next year, we're doing nothing but uh, incline. And the next, we're doing squats. And then you complain about, hey, why aren't we getting stronger? No, you do the same exercises over and over again in the same amount of reps and everything like that because you know that builds strength. Uh, 1% better every single day, you're going to be a, an entirely new person at the end of the year. It's the same concept with your offense. You can't expect to be an all-world offense when you're switching up from air raid. Uh, my wife's texting me. Uh, air raid to um, to wing T to everything like that. You cannot do that because they don't get good. How do you expect them uh, wide receivers to be able to run routes and find grass one year, and then the next year you're going, hey, guys, you were just going to be blocking over and over and over again. You can't do that, all right? It also confuses the coaches. How do you expect your coaches, who may not actually work or or love football as much as you do, you're going from the air raid and you've taught them, and now you're going to the wing tee hands down. One year you're a wide receiver coach, the next you're an H-back coach. How does that do that? And when you tie that in, you're losing the trust of your staff and of your players. You can't do that. Stop jumping and switching schemes. You've got to find what's successful. And where are you good at on the runs? What runs are you good at? Double down on those. Triple down on those. What about the passes? Double down, triple down on those as well. What did you suck at? I tell you what. I suck at cooking fish. I do. I burn it all the time or I undercook it or I just it, I pick the wrong thing out. It's awful. I And you know what I've done? I've stopped cooking fish. Just eliminated it from my diet. 
all together from uh, from preparing it. And and my house doesn't stink. My clothes doesn't stink. I don't upset my stomach. And my wife thinks I'm a great cook now because I'm not cooking fish. What is the point of that story? Find what you suck at and eliminate it from your playbooks. If you suck at rolling out, why are you putting in rolling out plays? If you suck at running power, why are you keep practicing power? Don't do what you suck at. Do continue to triple down and quadruple down on things you're great at. And just to let I'm gonna say this, you, you'll hear different from other people. There is no magic bullet. There is no offense that you can run that all of a sudden will turn your sorry players, if you think you have sorry players, into all world beaters. That doesn't happen. People are gonna try to sell you on things saying, hey, this is what can happen. But it's not. What you need to do is you need to pick an offense. Pick a system. You're not a genius. You cannot create something from scratch. If you could, everybody would be doing it. Pick a system. And then dive into that system. Know it inside and out. The tweaks, the if-then statements, how to practice it, how to game plan, all of that. Take the thinking out of creating your own system and get one that's already out there whether it be the air raid, the run and shoot, the flex bone, the wing tee, the single wing, the double wing, whatever it is you want to run, find that system, go all in. And I I hate to tell you this, you're not a genius. I'm not a genius. We're all not geniuses. So you can't create your own offense. You cannot combine the air raid with the run and shoot with the flex bone. You can't because if you did, someone else would have done it before you. And also, stop watching games on the weekend, on Saturdays and Sundays. Because what you're going to do, especially college games on Saturdays, you're going to bring those ideas that you saw because there's some really cool ideas to the office on Sunday, and then all of a sudden you're going to have a big-ass playbook, and it's going to suck. Your players are going to get confused. You're going to get confused. You're going to get frustrated. Your players are going to get frustrated. And it's not fun for anybody. So to recap, apply the 80-20 approach. Aaron Burr was right, you know, practice less, reps more, and don't jump on the newest things. Okay, so that's what I wanted to talk to you today about before I get into the questions because we have questions on Instagram. But so far, if you found that uh, helpful at all, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know because that lets me know that, hey, this is actually kind of good. I need to do more of these and it helps the algorithm get it out there. So, so far we got Jake. What's going on, buddy? How are you doing? Uh, Adrian, I hope I said that right. I'm dyslexic and uh, a, a bumpkin. What's going on, buddy? Uh, Noah, I am a 22-year-old. I want to start coaching and run plays on offense. How would you get in? Volunteer wherever you can. You can't expect the the moment you go out there, they're going to be like, hey, Noah, here's a whistle. Here's the script. You call plays, go. You got you to earn your, your keep. The easiest way to do that, volunteer and be the best coach at your position. That is that is my stuff. Uh, Ken, hey, coach, good stuff as always. I appreciate it, buddy. All right, so let's get into it. I asked these questions on Instagram. Hey, ask me a question. I will answer it on stream. The very first thing is favorite front side concept to pair with the Y cross. So what I'm going to do is I am going to bring up, hopefully this shows right here, boom, my freaking iPad. I I love this. All right, I'm going to do two by two, and it's very simple. The question, oh, let me let me zoom out just a little bit. There we go. All right, please forgive me. L, F, Y, and R. All right. Why can't it? Let me hold on. Boom. Boom. Nope, that's not it. This is the magic of going live. Let me zoom out just a little bit. All right. There we go. There. Scroll down. Ah. Okay. Whatever. So this is what we're going to do. Okay. It depends on does your guy have an arm? Because if he has an arm at quarterback, you can do two things. What I like to do if he has an arm is run the vert, is run a 10-yard out. So this is at 10 yards. Then you've got the cross. Then you've got a 15-yard dig. All right, so this is – let me get my head out of the way. So this is what I like. I like vert, out, cross, dig. The reason why I like that is because if this is the safety right here, let me bring this down, right there, he has to go with this, which opens up that right there. If I have a guy that does not have an arm, please forgive me, offensive line guys. I know you hate that, but I'm going to run the standard five-yard out. He's crossing 15-yard, and it goes one, two, three, four. 
That is what I do. Now, could you get fancy? Could you run smash on the front side, things like that? Yes, you could. I don't like that just because I'm not very good at it. So there you go. All right, favorite red zone pass play, corner. Hands down, corner. Uh, it's one of the best plays that you can actually run in the red zone. Don't at me, okay? Uh, favorite red zone formation, two back. So again, let's go back here. So I'll, show, I'll, I'll combine the two. This is my favorite pass play and formation in the red zone is two back. So we got Y. We're going to call this green right there. We got the F here, T, got the L. We're going to fast motion him this way right there. This is nasty right there. Best, uh, best one hands down that we have had success for. All right. So let's see. Adrian, I'm going to, from college to high school. How do you plan your schedule when you have your guys go both ways? Uh, very good question. I did a workshop, a mini workshop on that, planning the perfect practice. It should be linked down in the description below. But it, here's a brief summary. You've got to choose what are you. Are you going to be offensive focus or defensive focus? And that plays off of it. So when the place I was at, we, did, we had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. All right, so Monday – it was offensive focus. So we did half and half, or maybe it was more 70-30 offense on Monday. Tuesday, it was the reverse. So 70% was defense, 30% was offense. Wednesday, it was half. And then Thursday and Friday, Thursday we just did a walkthrough. That's how we did it right there. I hope that helped. Ethan, just applied to two OC jobs. Hopefully I can get some interview experience. Heck yeah, man. Congrats, dude. Let me know how that goes. Noah, I appreciate it. No problem. Uh, coach, I'm an OC for high school and Pee Wee needing some new spread playbooks. Where can I go and how can I get my hands on your offense? Great question. Uh, in the, the description down below, I have a book, I have practice things. All of that stuff is in the description down below. Uh, face, I'm a new OC for a semi pro team. I'm learning a lot from your channel. I appreciate it. Reach out if you need any help, man. Uh, good luck. All right. Next one. Your option, option, opinion on quads in the air raid. I'm gonna be honest. Not a very big quads guy. I'm not because it changes the concepts. And this plays into the next question. Uh, empty versus quads, which is better and why? I like empty. The reason why I like empty is because you can do you can do some stuff and it ties into whatever you've been running. So let's say we're going to go empty at a two by two. And what I mean by that is if we go empty, this is our standard two by two right here. So instead of the tailback being here, I can run any play just by moving the tailback either here, up, wrong one, either here or here. I'm going to put a circle right there. So we can run stick to the right, and I can put them on the left side. So if I wanted to run stick here, you know, and then slant right there. Or if I want to run something to the left, I could. Let's say I want to run... Um, Shallow cross. I want to run F shallow. Well, I can put my running back to the left, and he's a drag, he's the dig, you know, vert, vert, and then he's to the flat. Nothing changes for the running back. That's at a two by two. At a three by one, I can do the same thing. So I can take all of my three by one plays that I want, and instead of having my tail back in the backfield doing whatever it is, I can just move him right there. And I can still have my three by one concepts to the front side and then still do something on the back side. That's why I think empty is better than quads because you can only have a certain handful of plays and quads, but you can have the whole play book if you structure it right, going empty at a two by two move in the back and empty at a three by one and move in the back. That's what I like. Adrian, thanks. It's weird for me to go from a 110-man roster to a 45-man roster. I completely understand. Simplify. So that both goes both on offense and defense. Simplify your defense. Simplify your offense. And then you you have to have a gut check with yourself in the mirror. Hey, we're going to be predominantly offensive focus. Or we're going to be predominantly defensive focus. Don't listen to those coaches that say you can do both. I have found at the lower level, most co coaches, depending on the personnel they have, they go, okay, this team is more defensive focused, so we're going to go all in on defense. Or we have most of the athletes on offense, we're going to go all in on offense. And you have to keep things simple because, remember, your players 
are going to be learning both offense and defense. There's only a limited amount of space up here, so you've got to figure that out. I hope that helps. And again, if y'all like this, please give it a thumbs up. Let's YouTube know that, hey, this is some good stuff. And also lets me know that, hey, I need to be doing more of these lives. Uh, next question. Do you always have a 3 by one and a 2 by 2 version for every play if you run? 10 plays, 2 formations. Yes. Everything we do, and I think most air raid teams and simple teams like that that simplify stuff, if it works for 2 by 2 it should work for 3 by one There's a handful of them, maybe, that you only do one for – uh, one formation or whatever, but if you can, try to get everything working. So if you run a pass play, for instance, stick, we can run stick at a two by two, three by one, two by one. It's all the same concept. All right. So if you can do that, then you're cooking with uh with gas, if not, or grease, whatever the saying is. Uh, if not, uh, you might want to look at it. Scrappy, love your channel. I'm learning a lot as I, too, am a first-year OC for Semi Pro Team. Heck yeah, man. Uh, well, thank you so much, first off. And then maybe you and Face are going to face each other in the Semi Pro Leagues, man. Whatever it is, if you need help, let me know. I would love to help out. Adrian, I'm an O guy, and it's just about keeping it simple and slowly building from there. I completely agree. Completely. Kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. What is the best way to study offensive schemes and philosophies? All right, so what I do is at the end of every offseason, I go, I want to learn about this one team. I get real, I, I'm that creepy stalkerish girlfriend, ex girlfriend, or boyfriend. I don't, <laughs> I don't judge. That goes, that just obsesses over one thing. So for a while, it used to be Baylor when Art Bros was there. Then it was Mike Leach. I would do that. Then it was a run and shoot team. So I would try to find all the Hawaii film and everything like that when they ran it. Then it was actually on defense. I wanted to learn more about match coverage and then cover one, uh, uh, cover three shells and things like that because I really, I'm a huge fan of cover three and the different uh, passing coverages and everything like that. So my question, my answer to you is find a scheme you like. I know some coaches go all in on Coastal Carolina or Army or Navy, whatever it is. Find the scheme or the team that matches your scheme or what you want to learn and just freaking go all in and just become obsessed with that. And don't really worry about jumping from one philosophy to the next. You're not going to learn everything in like 10, 10 days. You can learn a lot if you in, in 90 days if you just focus those 90 days on this core concept and do it over and over and over again. That's what I would say. All right, God, uh, what you're doing is great. I appreciate it, man. That really means a lot to me. Hit that smat, hit that like button if you think so, <laughs> if you haven't already. Richard, what's going on, man? How are you? All right, next question. Uh, gap or zone runs as base in the air raid? This is going to – if you would have told me five years ago that I would answer this question with this, gap runs, I would have smacked you in the mouth. But what I have done, my experience, is gap runs are a lot easier to teach, especially if you're going to a team that's never run the air raid before but has a lot of gap-based concepts in the playbook in their run game. It's easier just to build off of that. The past two teams I've, I've helped coach under, uh, they haven't done zone. So I was just slamming my head against the wall trying to get them to understand zone concepts. Find the hole, slow through fast, slow to fast through, and all that stuff with the back until a switch went off. And I was like, hey, they've run a lot of power. They've run a lot of counter. They've run a lot of GT uh, schemes. Why don't we just base out of those? And instead of trying to make a square peg fit in a round hole, we just do what they are great at. And then we can focus on the different things, the passing concepts, you know, the reads, the screens, everything like that, because you've kind of checked the box when it comes to running. So, gap schemes all the way. Uh, Richard, did you read air option yet? Air option. Uh, I think I did. I don't know. Go ahead and ask your question already, and I'll answer it if I haven't. Best bootleg scheme. I'm going to be completely honest. In, in 12 years of actually coaching football, I know this is crazy. Um... I haven't ran a bootleg. I haven't. I don't I do not do boots. Uh, and I, I'm going to be completely honest with you because I'm not a good teacher of them. Not because I don't know the concepts. It's just I don't know when to call a boot. Yeah, especially in high school. That, ends crash, that end crashed last play. Let's call a boot to make them pay, uh, play. 
pay. Good Lord, Ron, I can't talk. But then you call it, and the end doesn't crash that time. So now I'm rolling out into a guy that's just sitting there. It's going to tackle. I don't like it. If I want to do something like that, I'm going to do screens, uh, quick game, or I'm just going to go ahead and throw the ball. That's the thing. But I will say, if you were going to do a boot scheme, try to marry it up with one of your core concepts. I know a lot of people, uh, the man, Nick Caduti, does uh, Y cross variations off of his boot and flood concepts. So Y sail and stuff like that to the boots. That way you're not teaching two different things. Best plays for smaller but faster linemen? Air raid. I'm going to be honest. I'm, 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 I'm guilty of being an air raid fanboy. I think you can run the air raid with any offense. It's just can they buy in? For some reason, especially in the South, a lot of coaches and players think throwing the ball makes you soft. I don't know why, but that's just how it is. And when you look at some of the best offenses in the past 10 years, they slang the rock, and then they were able to run. But in at least at Small Town USA, a.k.a. in South Carolina, the majority of people think if you throw the ball, you're a big, fat wussy, and you need to get the F off the field. I don't understand that at all. That's just what it is. Uh, gap is easier to teach, in my opinion, unless the kids have a zone history. I completely 100% agree with you on that. Jeremy's from there, from Texas. Heck yes. Jake, I like the PA read and the spread. It can be used like a boot, and you can use your F to chip the edge to get. Yeah. See, to me also, man, I'm just that's just too much coaching. Like I, I want a handful of plays that I am great at. And then, and then do it. Uh, I like to play action off of power with shallow cross. Richard, go for it, man. Just not my wheelhouse right there. All right, what a coach. <laughs> I, I just wanted to do this picture. Uh, just to wake you up. What do you have coaches look for in the booth? So this is, we had two coaches. One on top, one on the sideline. The one on top was telling me, and he was a former head coach. Love him to death. Coach Print, shout out. Uh, he would tell me the coverage that he thought the offense, the defense was in, and then who was rolling down or making the tackle from you know linebacker or secondary. The offensive line coach was telling me the front and if anyone was doing any stunts and things. That's what it is. But really, during the game, I'm just watching and just playing the game myself, man. I, I just kind of zone out and just watch, and then they will say something to me, and I'm like, okay, this is what we got to go with next, and it'll be going. And but sometimes, man, it's you can call a lot of things, and if it's if nothing's working, nothing's working. You, we've all had those games where we're just like, crap, can we get this over with? And coaches that say they haven't, they're lying. Or they're recruiting, and they got the best players in the state, and they don't have to worry about it. So <laughs> I hope that helped. That's all of the questions. That was the live. If you have any other questions, put them in the chat, the comments below. I will come back to this video and answer anything. And until next time, let's continue to match the spread, score points, and have fun. I will see you all later.